Hey guys, it's Allergy and today I'm doing a tutorial on um, V-Ray materials in Cinema 4D. Um, this will this tutorial will probably work for a lot of 3D software, but I'm using Cinema 4D. Um, so you're going to have to have the V-Ray renderer to start with. You literally need the V-Ray renderer. This is the whole point of this tutorial. Um, so once you've got the V-Ray renderer, you're going to need to make materials, obviously. So this is how you do that. Um, you can either make materials using Create Shader V-Ray Advance and then use these to make your own materials or you can download materials online to use in Cinema 4D now there's two websites that I use the first one is a um, official V-Ray for Cinema 4 dnet website um, and this has quite a few materials on it but not as much as I wanted um, it's useful though because a lot of, all of these materials come in .c4d format so they can just be dropped into Cinema uh, whereas on vray.materials, not vray-materials.de it's, it's designed for 3ds max users so um, all the files come in .max format and that's why you can't download any of the procedural materials because procedural means that it's been created solely in 3ds max without any external textures or images um, to be able to find out if it's procedural or not um, if you click on the texture on the material if it's got a kilobyte of more than say 300 or 400 then it's it's definitely got textures unless it's just a really big uh, material with a lot of uh, channels um, such as this one here this one's using external textures so we can download this and we can recreate it in uh, Cinema 4D using the textures that it comes with so we've already made a V-Ray material here and now I'll just take you through the diffuse layer is like the colour layer in your normal Cinema 4D materials it basically does the same function as that um, so we'll just click on here, this bar, and it should come up here, bump and diffuse maps, so there's the dot map file and this will open in Cinema 4D because it's designed for um, 3ds Max, uh, there's an image of the actual what we should get, so I'll open up the diffuse tab, the diffuse image for the diffuse tab obviously, and then it just comes up here and you can see it's it's visible on there. Uh, next we'll go to the specular tab and since this ha one, this material hasn't come with a specular we'll just copy this one over. Sometimes though materials from uh, vray-materials.de do come with like specular maps, reflection maps, uh, normal maps, like everything like that and that's really useful but when it doesn't you can just improvise by using the uh, diffuse material for the specular. It basically does the same thing anyway. And uh, this is a, a close-up. Right, it's still rendering, I think. Yeah, this is a close-up of what it's like when you use the specular, the same specular map as you use for the diffuse map, because it takes all the highlighted areas and it makes them a lot brighter, and it takes the darker areas and makes them less reflective. And um, the bump map, I'm pretty sure that the material did come with a bump map, so I'll just click on the bar again, and there's a bump map there, which is like just lighter. Um, just drop that in. And this is basically the same as a bump map is in the normal um, Cinema 4D textures. Um, I prefer to use a bump map as opposed to the V-Ray uh, displacement um, materials, which can be found in Create Shaders V-Ray V-Ray displacement material. Because if when you start using displacement materials, uh, your render time goes up by quite a fair bit, and I just think bump sort of does the same job. Fit well for me anyway. So. Um, I'm going to bump and you can alter the bump amount so you can put it up to well there's any number really I've, I usually have it between 1 and 3 somewhere around there so I'll just do that 3 and yeah but you can invert it as well so just say you wanted it to be like the opposite instead of like the bits that were sticking up you, d you want them to be inverted and to stick down you can just press the invert button there and it inverts the uh, the direction of the bump map so now we can put the material onto an object in Cinema 4D. So I've got a cube here set up with a plane underneath it with the uh, material we've just made put onto it and cubic seamless. Um, this is part where you can, you can alter the lengths and make it wider, uh, taller, or if there's a part of the text specifically that you want to show and it's not on there you can just use offset so you can move it around a bit and just uh, genuinely, generally, yeah, generally like 
put different bits of the actual texture where you want them to go. So, um, say you're using a brick material for a building, and there's a darker part and a lighter part, you can have the, uh, the brick material in different places, so you can have the darker material that would originally be there, you could just move it around and have it up here, which I think is quite useful. Um, so, now we can render this. Yeah, I... V-Ray... Very, very fast, exponential, or oh, Reinhard. Not exponential. These are just the um, the settings I use. No. Uh. This is it. Yep. So now we'll render. And you can see we've got the material in Cinema 4D when it's. Yeah. Now, instead of doing everything we've just done and importing directly from a 3ds Max material, you could create an account on this website, V-Ray for C4D.net, and go to the material section. And you don't have had to have buy bought V-Ray, sorry. So if you've managed to like download it in a legal way, and I'm not endorsing that or anything, but if you have, then you can still make an account and uh, and download textures from here. So I'll just type in concrete again. And I'll get the first one. Just download now. Just wait for it to download. Loaded, and now you can just go to create, load materials, and find your concrete. So, I know that's mine. And you get your C4D file there. Now, sometimes when you do download these files, they'll come with all of this stuff, which I usually just delete. But the problem is now, it's black, and that's because the um, the textures that are, came with it, they haven't been applied yet. Well, because the other person who's made it, they've been in different locations on his or her computer, so now you just need to redirect it. So, uh, and oh, concrete bump. You can find the file there, I downloaded it to, and just go into text, and and oh, concrete bumps there. So you just put that in, and don't change any of the settings, because it'll, it'll just do a preset, like how the other person's done it before you. Um, diffuse and or concrete diffuse two, just load and it's there. Once you do one from this location, all the rest of them will just default like go back to that place where the last texture was taken from. And so now you can see I've made the um, the material. We can just drag that and drop that on there. And yeah, and you can just render that. I know. I'm just gonna change the environment a bit. Now, if you're wondering why would you use V-Ray materials and not just use uh, normal Cinema 4D materials, it's because V-Ray Render Engine is for a lot more realistic images and a lot more realistic like output, whereas the Cinema 4D renderer isn't really designed... Well, you can get realistic results, but it's just a lot more easy to use the V-Ray Render system because it just you just get a lot better results. Um, yeah, so... As you can see now we've managed to import this directly into Cinema 4D from the website. So I'm just going to pause this and let it render. Okay, so I'm getting bored of waiting for this to render to be honest, but you can see from what's rendered already that it, the fact that we've added a bump map's like put a bit more depth into it and it's made it, uh, you can see there's more of like a, a, a texture to the material now and these spots here, you can tell that they've gone inwards. But let's just say that you needed more uh, of a depth 
So you could go create shader V-Ray displace. Now this displace material is probably going to boost the render time by quite a fair bit because um, it's it's a completely different texture, I mean different material on its own and it's not just a part of this material. So you, what you do is you'd go to and or concrete or whatever your material is, you take the bump map, at least that's the one I usually take, copy channel, go back to the displace material, paste channel and you can see on here now that these dots have been imprinted so you can just boost the amount up to say 4 yeah and you can see there's a lot more of a texture on the surface it's like here you can see like the ridges um, but you can also invert this as well so to say you wanted the holes to be outwards for some reason you could just put minus in front of it and then that'll do the complete opposite. Um, one thing I need to say when you're doing this is to press keep continuity because otherwise all the polygons on each side, all the sides will start to separate and come apart because of the displacement. So then what you need to do is you just drag on the displaced material and you put it under or before your actual material that's on the outside otherwise the, the material that you need to see it won't come up. Another thing is that, just say it's corresponding materials, so the displaced material is the same for this, uh, this view, so they match together. You're going to have to put this displaced material to the same uh, length and offset as you, and projection as you're going to have to for the other one. So this one's on cubic, so I'll just put this onto cubic. And coordinates, yeah. And then if I render this now, well, I'll put a bit more depth to it so the results are a bit more visible. Well, I'll try it without keep continuity first and see what comes up. Just render the top bit here. Oh, look, you can see these um, these holes already in the uh, in the object, and that's because of the displaced material. It's pushing the uh, the sides apart. So I, I don't think I even have to fully render that. So to get the point across that you shouldn't really be doing that. And that's why I used to do my first few models, and I used to wonder why light was uh, coming through the side of uh, buildings. And that's when I realised that I needed to keep keep continuity on. So if I do this now, you can tell it's all, it's all together now. So I'll just pause this while it renders and you can see the difference between when you use a bump map and a displaced material. And you can see from the part that we have rendered that there's a lot more, um, a lot, there's a lot more texture like ridges going on here, like if you look at the edges here you can see there's a lot more displacement here and also in the point where the holes are you can see there's actually a lot of depth there now and I think the displaced material just genuinely generally sorry why do I keep saying that word makes the um, the object look a lot more realistic and if it's realism you're trying to get then you need to use the displaced material really but I personally I've had a lot of problems with rendering recently like I'll have renders that will take 40 or 50 hours for for some unknown reason and since I stopped using displaced materials the render time's gone down by about 30 hours but um, yeah if you're looking for realism then you're going to need to use the displaced material because um, you can see from there I just rendered the top half of this square and it took almost five well, it took four and a half minutes now if I just had bumped that would probably take me about a minute but yeah um, I think that's everything yeah um, if you want more tutorials on V-Ray and modeling or anything like that then just um, tell me what you want and put it in right in the comment section below. Um, I know I'm probably not the best speaker or the best person to do tutorials but I'm just trying really because I've had a lot of requests over the last few weeks and just sort of decided that I should probably start but yeah uh, I don't claim to be good at doing tutorials or anything like that and I understand I've probably said um, a fair few times and uh, I've probably uh, missed like I probably missed quite a fair bit of uh, the materials out but um, yeah I'm just trying to get the uh, message across also I've let uh, I was kicked from era uh, about three days ago now and I'm still friends with everybody there and I've got no hard feelings against them but I just don't think I'll be joining another clan anytime soon um, because I don't really have a reason to. I mean, modelers aren't exactly needed in the community, <laughs> so uh, I might just focus on Behance and things like that. So, um, yeah, bye.